What's going on, everyone? CJ back here with a brand new episode of the SFL. That is right, the Smalls Football League. Welcome, welcome. We have made it to the first ever SFL playoffs here. We are in as the two seed, and we are taking on our division rival, the Austin Lumberjacks, who snuck into the playoffs as a seven seed. So inner division matchup here to see who gets to fight for the right to move forward in this first ever SFL playoffs. Getting a full look at the uh, playoff picture here. Of course, every time I go to switch a team, it doesn't let me see the playoff bracket. But luckily, if you stay ready, you don't got to get ready. And your boy here took a screenshot. So over on the AFC side, we got the Toronto Thunderbirds, us taking on the Austin Lumberjacks, of course, as the two and the seven seed. And the San Diego Aviators will get that first round by as they had the best record in the AFC. And then we get a look at the three and the six seed. We got the Montreal Monarchs taking on the Salt Lake City Bisons. And then the four and the five seed. My new favorite team probably, except for uh, us, of course, the Houston Oilers, clap it up for them, man. They made it in as the four seed, and I think they were only nine and eight, so just above 500, and we got a bunch of subscribers that joined Oiler Nation over there. They will be taking on the Oakland Wizards, so lots of subscribers in the playoffs. Other than the Monarchs, every team on the AFC has at least one, if not more, subscribers on that team. So that's pretty cool. And then over on the NFC side, we got the San Antonio Voyagers in as the one seed. And then we got the Virginia Beach Blues taking on the Portland Steamers, two and seven seed. And then we have the Anchorage Snowhawks taking on the Oklahoma City Antlers as the three and the six. And then the Vancouver Huskies and the Rio de Janeiro Redwoods as the four and the five. So happy to announce we got lots of subscribers in the playoffs. Should be an exciting one. And we got some new subscriber players joining the league here right in time for the playoffs. We are up to 43 subscribers in the SFL. So you guys are awesome. Killing it out there in the comments. Thank you so much for making this series interactive. And uh, the community has grown so much. I'm probably going to make a Discord server because when Madden 25 comes out, we are blowing this thing out of the water. Going to have a main franchise on Madden 25, but the SFL Gonna keep rolling with that too. So be on the lookout for that. Now here on the San Diego Aviators, just in time for the playoffs, new running back Aiden Leslie works out good because J.K. Dobbins is hurt. So Aiden will be a welcome addition to the squad. 5'11", 220 pounds out of Clemson. He is an elusive back with the 93 speed, 93 acceleration, 93 carrying as well. So shouldn't be fumbling the ball too much. Should be able to find those open lanes and just all around solid back. And he will also be joining a subscriber, Cameron Moore. Got the swag together for your brother just in time for the playoffs. So we have a subscriber quarterback and running back on the best team in the SFL. They look like they might be hard to stop. Another new running back on our arch rival, Brooklyn Nighthawks. Going to be joining another subscriber quarterback, Derek Daragosa. Uh, that would be one Mac Hayward. Now, the Nighthawks are not in the playoffs, but that's okay because we still got a while till Madden 25 comes out. So we're going to keep this thing rolling next season, guys. Oh, yeah. So if your team's not in the playoff this season, keep watching because there's always next year, right? Me living in Cleveland around all the Browns. We know that saying all too well. So Mac here, 5'8", 175 out of Miami. He's also an elusive back and pretty similar to Aiden. He's got 94 speed, 90 acceleration, good juke move at 89. You know, no true weaknesses, uh, just an all around good back. And he is, you know, not that it matters because they're not in the playoffs right now, but Brian Robinson is hurt. So if they were in the playoffs, Mac here would be starting, but uh, shout out to the two new subscribers joining the SFL. And last but not least for new additions, joining your very own Toronto Thunderbirds, we have Jax Vaden, brother of Silas Vaden, our subscriber D tackle. So the Auburn boys are suiting up and ready to show up for the playoffs. So Jax here is going to be our slot corner now. No more Patrick Peterson in that role. And I'll tell you what, the slot corner is overpowered in Madden. So it's actually a really, really good spot to be in. But Jack's here, 5'10", 180. Of course, as I said, out of Auburn, 94 speed, really good speed, 85 man coverage and 80 zone coverage. So really solid in, uh, you know, both uh, facets there to go along with the 85 awareness. 
But this is going to be a huge addition because our cornerback room, if you guys have been watching the gameplay, we started out so strong. Marcus Peters, DJ Reed, Patrick Peterson, they were getting picks left and right. They've been ghost mode these last couple episodes. So hopefully Jax joining the team here can propel us and get us some picks in these playoffs. Get a look at the Lumberjacks roster real quick. Can't believe they snuck in at nine and eight, but you know what? I'm happy for them because there's, first of all, there's two subscribers on that team and division matchups are always tough. So we got <laughs> Michael Yakin and Dang uh -huh. Bruh here. <laughs> Same player. Remember I told you when you get injured in the SFL, that's what happens. I got to just make somebody else you. So that way you could still play. And uh, yeah, Madden 25 injuries are definitely going to be off. So Michael, we know him well. He lit us up last time we played him. David Montgomery is the running back to go along with Zach Moss, Cordero Patterson. I saw back there as well. Derek Parrish is the fullback. And then wide receivers, they got Calvin Ridley, Brandon Cooks, Rondell Moore, Jalen Hyatt. So, I mean, decent kind of some age there. I guess, you know, Ridley and Cooks, I feel like are both two Number two wide receivers, if I'm being honest, but hey, it is what it is. And then, of course, tight end subscriber James Bariner going to be the number one tight end over Noah Fant. And I'm sure he will be uh, making a good impact out there. Getting a look at their offensive line, Charles Cross on the left tackle. Very good at 81. Matthew Bergeron, the rookie out of Syracuse. A lot of upside there. Pretty, uh, pretty high ceiling. No Connor McGovern, though. So Nick Gates will be the center. And Tevin Jenkins, good option at right guard, 82 overall. And then we got Trey Pipkins at right tackle. So offensive line, pretty good. This is where the problem lies, though, with these Lumberjacks. Nick Bosa, I mean, come on, no introduction needed. Derek Brown is a running mate on the other side, also very good. And Dexter Lawrence is the tackle. We played these Lumberjacks twice in the regular season, and man, oh, man, was it tough to run on them. So Tubby McDouble. Need you to uh, hit the hit some extra reps on the bench press this week. We're going to need it. And then linebackers, they got Zach Bond, Quay Walker, and Zaire Franklin. Good, good middle linebackers. Love Quay Walker, man. He's going to do great this upcoming season for the Packers, I think. Marcus Davenport, not uh, as good as he once was, but still pretty good option. And then Tariq Wolin, 98 speed. That is ridiculous. Got to watch out for him. MJ Emerson and uh, Jack Jones. But Tariq Wollin is definitely the guy to watch for. Andre Sisko, pretty good free safety too. And Kirby Joseph, decent strong safety. So good secondary, I would say. Harrison Butker, one of the best in the business, I would say. Except for our kicker, right? Justin Tucker. And then Braden Mann is the punter. So that is the squad. We are going up against the Austin Lumberjacks. I'm going to do subscriber stats next week. I was going to do them this week, but trying to keep these episodes down, you know, and the intros down, but... Man, there's just so much to go over, but rest assured, I will go over the full season subscriber stats at the beginning of next episode, so make sure you don't miss that. But it is time, guys. Without further ado, let's get on down to Thunderbirds Field, take on our division rival Austin Lumberjacks, and get ready for the game. Jordan Love leading his troops out on the field. Up and down season for Mr. Love. I mean, he leads the league in uh, passing yards, which is great. Maybe even touchdowns as well. But man, oh man, has he been slinging some interceptions. And we'll have to take a look at the score ticker at the bottom. Not sure if we are the first game, but I would love to see some scores so we can see how our subscribers are doing. And uh, we are going to see Michael Yakin and James Briner first here as we kick the ball off to them. Not even going to look at Yakin's. Well, I guess we'll look at him, but it's going to be skewed. As you know, as I mentioned, we got uh, Dang Bruh has most of the stats. But we'll add them all up together. But, hey, ever since I re-added Michael, he's playing pretty good with no interceptions. Got to watch out for that today. Yakin going to start this thing out shotgun here. He's got David Montgomery to his right and three wide receivers as well. Yakin's a really good player, and apparently so is David Montgomery as he gets almost to the second level, picking up 13. And I mentioned it's so tough to run against these Lumberjacks. Maybe it's going to be tough for us to stop the run. I mean... David Montgomery's good, yes, but, I mean, you think we'd be able to stop him? But Yakin actually going to go empty this time, so maybe, oh. Ugh. Brother, ugh. God, what happened? Somebody got bumped on their route. It's Rondo Moore. Jax Vaden, the new subscriber, can't catch him. Okay. I feel like I saw somebody get bumped on the route there. Got to get a second look at this. But that is not... 
how you want to start your first playoff game in the SFL. We're going to take a look at this. I mean, okay. Yakin, uh scan in the right side of the field. There's Vaden, number one, our new our new uh, corner. And, oh, you know what happened? It was like a natural pick set by Brandon Cooks. He actually ran into more. But just the body being there kind of blocked off. You see Vaden pushed over to the side there. And, I mean, okay. Lumberjacks came to play, I guess. Got to be careful. Definitely don't want to get first rounded by not only a inferior team to us, just going by record, right? Just going by record. They're an inferior team, but also, you know, our subscribers would definitely have bragging rights. So got to <laughs> make sure we pick it up. And I don't want to get uh, first round exit in our first ever playoff game. So this man right here, Jordan Love, 5,263 yards, 34 touchdowns. I know you guys can't see it, but it's 17 interceptions. So he is going to need to rally the boys. And really, I'm going to I'm gonna start inside run from Tubby on the draw. But I don't think I'm going to be going to that too long because it's usually very hard to run against that guy, Dexter Law or Derek Brown, and Dexter Lawrence for that matter. But we'll see how the run goes to start. We'll go empty ourselves here. Zay Jones is getting pressed. Probably going to look for the drags, but you never know. Uh, oh, depending on what that safety does, that could be it. Pass out of reach by Love. That's been kind of a common trend these last these last few episodes is inaccurate balls and interceptions. So got to, got to, got to make sure we clean that up. Here on third and eighth, this is already a crucial one. We're going to put Zay Jones on a curl and also have Kareem Hunt uh, block for us as well. And let's go to probably our MVP. Out of Scantling, it's not there. And Kirby Joseph there in coverage. Wasted drive, three and out. We're going to bring out our subscriber punter, Jack Mavros. Hopefully he can kind of pin him deep. Should be a pretty good punt. Tried to kind of line drive it there a little bit. And uh, it's going to be Rondell Moore. Bear catching it. And Lumberjack's chance to go up big early. All right, guys. Let's uh, pick up the pace here. Kind of watch him. It's going to be... Nope. It's going to be uh, it's that James Briner, the tight end. Poyer was there. Was kind of out of position. Thought that Briner might beat us on the drag. He did not. And it was only a pickup of three. So pretty good defense there. And we're going to go through uh, in our 4-3 here. We're going to use her up on probably Antoine Winfield. He's going to be guarding James Briner, of course gonna be up yep that's me that was my responsibility play fake got me and look these subscribers for the lumberjacks are making some noise early how about yak and starting out a perfect four of four he came to play and good for him like to see our subscribers doing a great job uh oh matt milano we haven't seen him all season he's been injured our middle linebacker of course this was uh uh the buffalo well yeah it was buffalo so he was already on their roster I didn't turn off pre-existing injuries, which I should have. But Matt Milano on the field. Haven't seen him all season. Will he make an impact, though? That's the question. And will Yakin hand this thing off to Montgomery? He sure will. Miles Garrett there to stop him. Good play. That is going to result in no gain. We really, really got to get him off the field here and force a long field goal. That would be much, much deserved from our defense. And it's going to be a sack. And that is none other than big number 99, Silas Vadim. Hit him with the Michael Jackson celebration. Did I see that correctly? Hold on. Did he just hit him with the wee -hee -hee? Think he might have, but he, whatever he did, he got back there. Big sack on Yakin. And I think he did hit him with the MJ. Okay. I see you, Silas. Doing the dang thing. It's going to be a long field goal from Harrison Bucker. He'll probably drill it. He's a good kicker. Not the most popular man in the world right now, if you don't know what. Oh, he missed it wide left. Look at that. Defense coming up big. Okay, and almost blocked there by Poyer as well. It looked like, but bend, but don't freaking break, I guess. And that is just the stop that we needed. I need Logan Thomas to block because our offensive line, is there a subscriber offensive lineman that wants to join this team? Our offensive line has been trash as of late, man. But somebody's open there. Oh, my God, love. That's on me. I should have let that one down. Second and 10. We're kind of getting forced into passing plays here, which you don't always like to see that. But there's Mike Oxmall, another subscriber. 
for Love's first completion of the day. It is good for 18. And boy, oh boy, did we need that. Feeling a little bit better about this game. I got to be honest. I was, I, was, I was not in a good place a few moments ago. Very dark place. And let's uh, try Tubby on the screen. These screen passes and RPOs usually work pretty good for us. Good block there by Joe Tooney. Tubby always pushing the pile forward as he tends to do. Tubby McDouble, also subscriber on this channel, our running back out of Oregon State. And now we're starting to get some traction. We got the ball almost to the red zone. But the question is, can we inside run against this team? I'll probably go some outside zone RPOs, but... Ooh, that... It's always Dexter Lawrence and Derek Brown. They shed their blocks instantly, and I don't like it. Second and 10, let's hit them with a little play action. Ooh, that might be Valdez Scantling. Valdez Scantling, not a subscriber on this channel. I wish, that would be cool. But let me tell you what, this man, he's quietly been our MVP. You don't got Chris Olave, he's hurt. Zay Jones, I mean, he's Zay Jones. He always makes good plays here and there, but just been kind of quiet as of late. So in the receiving department, I would say MBS has been our guy. We're going to go a little press blitz here. And, oh, if David Montgomery blocks, he's not going to. Yep. Oh, but it's an errant pass by Yakin. He had Montgomery wide open on the Texas route and just flat out missed him. All right, guys, come on. This is our chance to really bust this thing wide open. We got Jax Vaden on the field. And Yakin, where is he going to go? He's going in the direction of Vaden, but it's Winfield with the pick. Antoine Winfield, last episode, he had that crazy one-handed interception off the bobble. If any of you guys watched that, that was absolutely wild. And Yakin going to throw a pick and a costly one at that. We're more or less already in field goal range. Of course, we don't want a field goal. Yes, we want more. But I'm just saying, if that's what happens, I can definitely settle for that. Now, uh, Oxmall on the RPO, it's not there. We're going to go outside to Tubby, not the most speed in the world. Kirby Joseph there to hawk us down for only a limited gain of three. Come out shotgun here and a little mesh concept on the field. Also make double on the wheel route. We're just going to go underneath to Oxmall. It was a low throw, but Mike Oxmall, got to be careful. He fumbled last episode. Also subscriber on this channel. Shout out at Rams fan. Look, I'm telling you, if you guys are watching this right now as we speak and you're not subscribed and you're not in the SFL, I mean, come on. I'm going to need you to get it together. This is fun. This series is fun, and uh, I do engage back with you. If you want to, you know, comment down below your player. I'll add you. It's the playoffs, but whatever. There's there's no rules the first season of the SFL. Jordan Love had Zay Jones, but another inaccurate pass, and Jervon Dexter gets injured for the Lumberjacks. Third and three, why did I go inside zone, you may ask? I don't have a good answer for that. I really don't. Uh, Dexter Lawrence is probably going to end my life. But we're going to bring in Kareem Hunt, and we are – see, I mean, look at that, man. You you can't – Dexter Lawrence is like a god in this game. You just can't run against him. So I'm just going to have to pretty much eliminate that thought from my mind altogether. Going to go up 10-7 probably, yes. And that's good because we were at risk of being down 10-0 or 14-0. And now we actually did take the lead. So good bounce back by the T-Birds. So now Yakin bunch to the right. Gotta watch the other subscriber. Reiner back there. Oh, it's Yaya Diaby. You gotta be kidding me. He was going for Briner. Oh man, and the big linebacker out of Louisville, the rookie, about to be two year pro in real life, just jumped in front of the route. That was incredible. And we got two picks, look at that. I mean, just read the eyes the entire time. He is not uh, one of our big interception getters, so to speak. He got one on that, and man, I was just pretty much dogging this defense. Free game, and they are doing the dang thing. Now, let's see. Maybe Oxmall on the RPO, or could. Nope, they're, guard, they're uh, watching that pretty good. But the outside run is definitely the answer, and now Tubby gets hurt. No! No, no, no. Tubby... I got some uh, some special Ooh. McDoubles in the locker room for you. It'll have you back out here in a jiffy. Don't you worry. We're going to need you. 10-7, a funky, funky game, if I do say so myself. Lumberjacks outgaining us. 
But it's just the picks. The picks are what did them in. And our defense stepping up, our offense really, I mean, hasn't been anything to write home about. So not going to give too much credit to them. But uh, I do think that Logan Thomas is going to put him on an out route. I don't really like this uh, play call necessarily. Underneath back shoulder throw to Thomas. He dropped it. And Love only at 50% completion. And Tubby won't come back either. So that is absolutely heartbreaking. So we're going to have to do it with Kareem Hunt and whoever the heck else our, our, uh, our other running back is. Zay Jones might be my first read here. I'm going to be honest. Come on. Beat the press. He did not. Fumble. No. Marcus Davenport picks it up. I'll tell you, man. This offensive line. I need a subscriber. Who's an offensive lineman? Nick Bosa, yeah? I mean, I guess that was in a throwing motion. I need some gosh dang offensive linemen. Please. Our offensive line shouldn't even be that bad, but they are. Time and time again, week after week, we just have no protection. David Montgomery didn't have any protection either as he's only able to pick up three. I don't know. Just doesn't seem like it was this hard for us earlier in the year. Now, granted, we still have a good record. We're in the playoffs. We're the two seed. Welcome back, Matt Milano. Forgot you were even on this team. And you're doing your best to remind me today. So defense, loving it. We're going to guess pass. We're going to shade inside. We got uh, Jax Vaden corner lined up there against uh calvin ridley and we'll see what he does we're in zone though another sack on yakin is he gonna take off he can't really just gonna throw it away because jacks vaden was in pursuit and these two quarterbacks not really looking too good turning the ball over throwing in completions bringing out the punters and uh the lumberjacks are oh gosh should have fair caught that patrick peterson hold on thank you Austin Lumberjacks not looking great. And if we just can score here, we can really bust this thing wide open. And the passing game is a struggle. I will say that. So Kareem Hunt, let's uh, have you block because we're not handing the ball off to you. And hopefully, ah, oh, I shouldn't have thrown that. God almighty. I don't know how Kirby Joseph didn't pick that. But I have got to get my crap together. See, the thing is, though, like I'm just I'm scared to hold the ball. For any length of time because of our offensive line and third and ten we're gonna go pa crosser usually get some uh pretty good routes oh that could be money thank you thank you zay jones okay that is the first really good route and really good pass combination that i've seen all game it was definitely a good one that takes us into lumberjacks territory at the 42 and i want to see okay oxmall should one would think, get open on this RPO. I don't think the corner would follow him. He did not. And with a good block, Oxmall could be there. Pickup of about 11. Jordan Love still at 50% completion. But we are now down to the 29-yard line. Looking a little better, but I'm still not sold on the performance of the Thunderbirds. So sell me right now on this little I-form play action. See if uh, someone can get open. Is that MBS? Should be. Toe tapping on the sideline. Probably should have bullet passed it. I did not. I touched past it. If that was a bullet, that might have been six. See, this is a situation where I would audible into inside zone. I'm not gonna. Instead, it's Zay Jones. That was a dot. I love. That was a dot. Probably his best pass of the game, if I'm being honest. That gives us a little bit more breathing room, though, as it puts us up 17 to 7. And right now, our defense is locked in, and we pretty much got Yakin flustered out there. What will Yakin do on this one? Yaya Diaby has a pick already in his back pocket. He's going to be out in coverage again. And Yakin survey, and this time he is going to take off. He does got some wheels. Yaya Diaby was right there to stop him, but not before Yakin was able to pick up a gain of 13. So that was a good play for them. I feel like they just needed a first down. That was probably what uh, they just needed to see a first down. That's it. And we'll come out here and see. Oh, almost got to Yakin again. Forced to errant throw. Brandon Cooks was in the vicinity, but so was DJ Reed. Okay! Yakin empty now. So we got Bobby Wagner and others blitzing. Bobby does have a good amount of sacks on the season. Wide open as Cooks there. Can't have that happen. That was a nice pickup. So Yakin definitely trying to put some points on the board. 
But I would also imagine trying to kill this clock a little bit as well. He's going empty now. And that time, ooh, it, it was almost a Yaya Diaby pick on Briner again. Like in the vicinity of Briner, targeting Briner. That's exactly how we got our last pick. Yeah, I can better be careful, man. You don't want to have three first half interceptions in an SFL playoff game. I don't know if you guys are familiar with the history of the SFL playoffs, but interceptions lead to points. That makes no sense because this is the first ever SFL playoffs, but it sounds good. Okay. Mid blitz here. See if we'll rattle Iakin and also see if he's going to give it to Montgomery. It was a screen pass, but the pressure was there. I think that was veteran Bobby Wagner, and I'm not sure if they don't pick up any yards on this one. This was about the range that Bucker missed it earlier. So I'd be curious to see if they go back to him. They got a bunch to the left with Briner, Ridley, and also Rondell Moore. Yakin. It was in the vicinity of Rondell Moore, but it was throw out of bounds. And they are going to go for the field goal, but this is about identical range where uh, Bucker missed it wide left earlier. So let's see if he can redeem himself for their sake. I hope he can. It's off the crossbar. You got to be kidding me. Cut this man. Cut this man. Any subscriber kickers out there that want to join the Austin Lumberjacks? You'll get to see your player play twice per year because they're in our division. And <laughs> Bucker's good, but man, oh man, he's kind of selling in this one. So we'll see. Maybe Zay Jones gets beat on press. I don't like it. So we'll just go to Darren Waller on the drag. Actually, a really nice game. Getting it to the 39 of Austin. Coming out I here, going to be an outside stretch to Kareem Hunt, but I'm double teaming Dexter Lawrence. I feel like you almost have to when you're playing against him in Madden. Looks like it's a good idea. I should have cut left. There was no point in juking out to the right there. I thought that maybe, I don't know. I wasn't thinking. I was just acting uh, on impulse and didn't work out in my favor. We're going to go back to the outside stretch slash RPO. I wish that we were on... Left hash, though, uh, unless Oxmall gets open and doesn't get followed by the corner. This one might, but he doesn't get followed by the corner, and he might have the speed for a first down. He does not. He's brought down there by MJ Emerson. That's going to bring up a key third and two and see if I was confident in our running game. I just know what would happen, man. I just know what would happen. I'll tell you what. We're going to make him think that we're dumb because... We're not, obviously. We're going to make him think it's going to be a run. It's actually going to be a play action. So let's see if this works. Oh, God, no. Jordan Love couldn't get it. Tried to get it out there to use check, but Nick Bosa was in my face. That was a disgrace. Hopefully this football is lined up to the proper lace. And Justin Tucker can... I got no other rhymes. Put it through the upright. He does. And we go back up by 17. LJAX better engineer a drive here uh, because this one's starting to get a little out of hand and starting to feel better about our T-Birds. Yakin keeps getting oh, forced shit. out of the pocket and it's Wagner and he might pick six it. Old man Wagner gonna people's elbow into the end zone. Yakin is folding in this game. Absolutely folding. The last cut and uh, here's also too, since it's on my mind now, these players that got injured in the SFL, I had to obviously recreate them. And that's why you see two players on the depth chart. But it is worth noting that I literally carbon copy. The stats are if you got injured and your player is now yourself, this is a weird little, <laughs> weird little scenario here, I know. But what I'm saying is the stats are the exact same. Everything was the same. Height, weight, college, appearance, stats, tendencies, traits, everything. So this is just a different version of Yakin that we saw earlier in the year. And the crazy thing is, too, we got two picks from linebackers. Yaya Diaby and Bobby Wagner. So it's not even the corners. And, oh, God, this is this has been their, their one bright spot has been David Montgomery. He's at six for 58. Could be night-night time for the Lumberjacks. I don't, I'm not going to play like – I'm not going to play that way. I'm going to play – as if it's 0-0 zero, zero, because we all know what happens in Madden. Milano, fourth interception, and that was a user lurk. That was a user. That was all me. And these linebackers are having a freaking interception party today. I can't believe it. 
Now that one was that one was me. I, I you know, got to give myself credit where it's due. Sometimes I definitely lurked with Milano, but that's what he does in real life. He's he's a great off-ball linebacker. Made a great play there, and we're looking to score again before halftime. And we're doing a good job. 22 seconds left. I understand the time, and we got all of our timeouts, so I'm not too worried about it. We're going to go ahead and use one now. But even a field goal, man, going up 30 to 7, it's hard to come back from that, especially when you can't stop throwing interceptions. So uh, see if we can score again here before halftime. That would be awesome. Oxmo. Nice break up there. Third and 12 coming up. Third and 12, we're going spread. This could be Hunt on the Texas route. If we can get it over the head, it's there. It's there. It's there. We're going to call a timeout. Seven seconds. And this is a. This looks like a completely different Thunderbirds team, man. Completely different Thunderbirds team than we saw in the first half. And I pretty much got eyes on the left side here. Kareem Hunt leaking out. He should be able to get in. I mean, what's up, Thunderbirds? We have arrived. 34-7, going to go into the locker room. And I mean, I'm here for it. I am freaking here for it. And how quickly the tides turn. 34-7, we are vastly outgaining them through the air. Can't get anything going on the ground and haven't even had to. So we must be the first game here in Super Wild Card Weekend as we have no stats or scores to update on but there's a look subscribers on every team besides the monarchs so very interesting to uh check the stats post game and see how everybody did and now we're gonna go run outside for sure no point in even trying to run and we are also gonna uh, defend medium pass yakin will definitely be trying to air it out he's already not played well so hopefully we can uh you know lock those routes down play some good man and or zone coverage and we could be, uh, there could be some significant edits in this one. Significant cuts, I should say. Depending on what happens on this drive. Probably going to play this uh, ultra conservative to start. I mean, if something crazy starts happening, then we'll shift the focus. But no need to do anything crazy. Start launching picks. I mean, second and ten now, we're behind the sticks. So obviously, we're going to have to go through the air. Not just going to, you know, run three times and punt it. I'm not saying we're going to be that conservative, but... Yeah, I'm not looking to do anything crazy. Um, Dexter Lawrence still has his X Factor on. How, how's that not pass interference? I mean, come on. Like, literally, Zach Bond tackled my receiver. This isn't the best way I wanted to come out of the locker room. Um, but maybe, maybe we could do something good here. We shall see. Oh, no need to do anything crazy. Start launching picks. I mean the pass <laughs> i mean i literally just said oh my god dude all right i'm just you know keeping it interesting to uh keep you guys watching yeah we'll, we'll, we'll just go with that i literally just said we can't start launching picks what did i do yeah i launched a pick and that gives yakin and these lumberjacks a little bit of momentum that they desperately need but a nice play there by Marcus Peters. You see there on the stat line with those four interceptions. And now we can comfortably guess pass. We're going to ah, we'll shade inside. I like to do that. And we'll see what Yakin does here. Empty out of the shotgun. He might get sacked. Surely he won't scramble. I mean, that might go down as a sack, actually, for Marcus Peters. And we're going to go back to Harrison Butker, who can't seem to hit the broad side of a barn on his kicks. I think he will drill this one, though. I got to be honest with you. And he will. So uh, we just gifted the Lumberjacks three points. Can't be doing that. If we're going to throw it, which I would prefer not to, <laughs> if I'm being honest. If we're going to throw it, it's going to be safe, short completions. And I feel like, uh, yeah, we got to double team Dexter Lawrence pretty much every set if we're running it. And need a good pull from our guard, Kareem. There we go. Okay. The best run of the game. Comes at a very opportune time as well. And Kareem will get the ball down to the 41. I mean, I might never call a play that's not an RPO again. Uh, we got Oxmall. Yeah, it's right there. Okay. Oxmall, can you juke a man? Didn't juke a man, but does pick up a nice gain of seven. 
that keeps this uh, clock ticking down, which is right now the biggest factor. I'm going to try to... This could be the dumbest thing of my entire life, okay? But I'm going to try to hit him with maybe a dagger play here. Don't want to get too complacent. Darren Waller, pick up the first down. That's all I'm asking. He's actually short by inches. Fan-freaking-tastic. Got to be Kareem on the screen, I think think this play should work we got dexter lawrence yeah okay very good green with some nice blockers as well love up to 253 but still still not the greatest completion and of course now we also have uh that interception on our resume which that will be 18 from love this year which i'm not happy about uh but you know i'll take the uh leading the league in yards as a pretty good trade-off and waller got bumped on his route no uh, illegal touching or anything called. And Quay Walker was there in coverage. All right, this hasn't worked yet. I really wish Olave was here because he beats guys on press, but maybe uh, with a good pass, Zay J it's overthrown again. Jordan, I'm talking to you, man. Huh? And I don't even think we're necessarily in Tucker field goal range either. So uh, might need to pick this up here. Can't just be not scoring points. It could be Oxmall. There we go, baby. Clutch on the reception. Way to hang on after contact. Love getting our subscribers involved. And that was a very clutch play indeed. Still going to be stretch play out of single back. And yes, of course, I'm IDing up Dexter and Kareem. I need you to get some speed to outrun Quay Walker. And he had one man to beat. And that could have been six. Was not able to beat said man, though, unfortunately. I think we go PA here. Play action. Uh... It's kind of a tricky part of the field. I mean, I'll, I'll take a field goal, right? That'll that'll match what uh, the Lumberjacks did. I'm just going to run out of bounds. I didn't like anything about that. And Nick Bosa is going to get credit for the sack. Huh? Like I said, though, I'm fine with the field goal. If that's what ends up happening, totally cool with it. Yes, I would, uh, of course, like points. But, yeah, let's just do... Ooh, 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 MVS. Yeah, closer than I thought. But, no, no shot that we're going for this. We're just going to take the field goal. I mean, it just, you know, pretty much erases the points that the Lumberjacks scored on their last drive when I gifted them the ball. But three minutes to go to the four, to the fourth. I don't see them scoring the amount of points they need to come back in this one. Might want to look to get this guy involved. I mean, at this stage of the game, of course, with the scoreboard being the way it is, you really you can't run it. I mean, you can, but we're up by 27, so... I mean, if they run it, they better be open for a big, huge chunk play. Montgomery's good for those every now and again, and right on cue, nice juke as well. Poyer had to hawk him down and Bobby Wagner out of his middle linebacker position. Oh, the nice run there by Montgomery and gets it all the way into T-Bird's territory. So, you know, they're doing just enough, just enough to still keep me nervous. I'm not that nervous. I don't got the nervous toots going on or anything like that. Not yet. Although David Montgomery might be Mr. X-Lax himself because he's starting to pick up some nice runs. And right now, I mean, just stat padding, you know, making the scoreboard look a little bit more respectable, I suppose. Let's use her up on Vaden. Give me a Vaden pick. Nope. Just going to be Calvin Ridley wide open. Another first down for the l -Jacks. Also, got to get some AA batteries for my freaking PS5 light back there in my background. I want that thing on. As you can see, it's off right now. And, boy, that's how you know we're in a blowout game. If I'm talking about my PS5 light behind me, I mean, you got to talk about something. I'm, I'm sure the Lumberjacks will score here. That's that's just what happens in Madden. But, or maybe another pick. DJ Reed was so close. And, yeah, Brandon Cooks gets it. That's awesome for them. Going to make it 37 to 17. So, still a 20-point ball game. So, yeah, it was a four-score game uh and four score and seven years ago it was looking like the t-birds were not playing that good and the lumberjacks had it figured out but tides have drastically shifted and we are one quarter away from advancing to the divisional round of the playoffs let's put the good old proverbial nail in the coffin here gonna be an i form rollout out of play action but nick jones exists can we hit kareem i mean all that for no game all we did is drain fatigue from our players and, you know, whatever. Doesn't matter. Like I said, this game is pretty much over, but still going to try to pick this one up here. 
And we're going to go back to the play action rollout. But this time we got Zay Jones on the field. So hopefully he can make a good play or MBS. But it's another inaccurate ball by Love. It is what it is. Look, trying to get my man Jack Mavros, the subscriber punter, out here on the field. And let's get ourselves a, a nice good old coffin corner kick. That would be awesome. Let's see what Jack can do. It's heading that way. And will it be a fair catch? It will not. So obviously the net yards will go down. But can the Lumberjacks score 20 points in seven and a half minutes? David Montgomery seems to think so. I do not. Oh. It's a pick from Patrick Peterson. Oh, man. Even lower on the depth chart now because we got Baden. But Patrick's like, look, you want to move me down, brother, on the depth chart? Let me show you what the old man's got. That's five picks from Yakin. Oh, man. Well, it's safe to say that our defense, our secondary, is uh, well-rested and ready for the playoffs. That's a breath of freaking fresh air. Melvin Gordon going to score, and that is actually our other running back that I could not remember besides Kareem Hunt because he never gets carries. Uh, we brought him in for one set because I just took all of our starters out, and he scores. So we are going to put up a 40 bomb on the Lumberjacks. SFL playoffs, I'm sure they're not going to be a breeze. This was the seventh seed. You know, we still got a lot of good teams in here. The Oilers, the Wizards, the Bisons, of course. The Aviators, who uh, played us well. They beat us last time we played them, and they got some new subscribers on the team. So I don't foresee every game being like this, but it's a heck of a start. Robert Sala cannot believe it. I kind of can't believe it either. 44-17 is your final utter domination by the Thunderbirds. That's a lot to unpack, man. I mean, we started out looking like trash, looking terrible. Jordan Love, I mean, pretty good game. I, I will give him that. He turned it up. Almost 300 yards, three touchdowns, one pick. Yakin, six interceptions. Actually, one more in garbage time against Patrick Peterson. So he had six interceptions. I don't... Not sure I've seen that in Madden uh, in Madden 24 in any of my plays, at least. And the running game, I mean, it was kind of there for Kareem Hunt towards the end. David Montgomery played well. Tubby got injured, though. That's definitely going to have to be something that we look at here. Uh, Mike Oxmaw, subscriber, 8 for 87. Really big game. Uh, Kareem Hunt, actually, in the receiving area, also did great. And MBS, too, just doing what MBS does. Now, Defensively, uh, let's see. We got Matt Milano came back and just had a just a crazy, crazy impact. Jax Vaden, four tackles. So, you know, no picks or anything like that. But, um, oops, we are not done with the defense. Sorry about that, but still, still good. And then his brother, Silas Vaden, had that big sack earlier, which also counts as a TFL as well. Jack also with three punts as well for a buck 20. Net yards 111 and, you know, average 40 yards per punt. I may need to up the power sliders on punting because I feel like punting and kicking it's just so hard to get, you know, uh, good stats and stuff like that. And look, defense, A plus, gold star. You are excellent. Take some candy from the candy jar after class because you guys passed the test. But now we got to look and see what else happened here in Super Wildcard weekend and oh my god hold on to your freaking britches we play the houston oilers in the divisional i would i want to play that right now i want to play that right now so let's take a look and see what happened then we'll look at some stats so we obviously beat the lumberjacks and salt lake city bisons beat the montreal monarchs so there's some subscribers on that team that's awesome to see and the houston oilers dispatch the oakland wizards so yeah Two in the fourth seed going against the one in the sixth seed. Virginia Beach Blues lose to the seventh seed Portland Steamers. No. My boy Yeezy on that team. I was pulling for him, man. I was pulling for him. And the Anchorage Snowhawks also beat the Antlers. We have a subscriber on the Antlers. And the Huskies beat the Redwoods. So, wow. Tons of subscribers left on the AFC. No subscribers left on the NFC. Oh, man, the Virginia Beach Blues. That one really, really gets to me. Let's look at some stats from Wild Card Weekend. So the Steamers and the Blues. It was a close game. I don't even know who the Steamers have. Haven't even talked about them. Josh Allen played good, which is a rarity for this franchise. And uh, they got Derrick Henry, I see. 
receiving easy head four for 67 uh john dotson had the touchdown from josh allen but it just looks like it was a, a hard fought back and forth game i mean that's a heartbreaker for the blues for sure um but yeah, uh, Jordan Addison and Jahan Dotson had the touchdowns. Yeezy still played good, but Virginia Beach Blues knocked out of the playoffs. Bisons and Monarchs. We uh, got some subscribers on the Bisons here, starting with Mason Buchanan. Wow. 292 and three touchdowns. Outdool Joe Burrow, which is definitely not an easy thing to do at all. And oh, look at the subscriber running back, Nico P. 12 for 101. Average 8.4 yards per carry. And two big old touchdowns helping to propel the Bisons to a nice victory. Snowhawks beat the Antlers. Yeah, some of these NFC teams, I kind of forgot like who they even have. Matthew Stafford over there. Um, but we have a subscriber corner on the Antlers. So we'll check out stats of C. Ben. I mean, five tackles and a pass deflection. That's good. Could have used a pick or a sack or a forced fumble or something. Hard, lo hard fought loss there by the Antlers. Houston Oilers and the Wizards. Wow, this Oilers team, I mean, they're doing something special, but oh no, Lucas Thomas got hurt, it looks like, because they brought in Cooper Rush playing against da Dak Prescott and Bailey Zappi. What are these stats that I'm looking at? Sam Ellinger also got in there. They must have just had a lot of injuries, but... Losing Thomas, that's not good. And we also have, where is, hold on. What is going on with these stats? Also Gutierrez, no, no rushing yards either. So maybe he got hurt as well. Not 100% sure, but Kyrie Brooks, one catch, but for 50 yards and a touchdown. Wow. And Floyd Butler as well. Really, really, uh, well, I mean, he wasn't as impactful, I guess. Two for 32. Wait, wait a second. Hold on what the wizards have a running back i am Musa. why did he have two for six i don't know i don't know what this this was the weirdest game uh stat wise that i've seen but the receivers played well and then we also have a defender on the wizards as well which would be none other than michael briner two tackles and a tfl no sacks though but i don't know like i don't know what i just witnessed stat wise but I'll make sure it's all good for the next episode. And capping things off here, the Huskies did beat the Rio de Janeiro Redwoods, who we just added subscriber quarterback to Lionel Moore. I mean, he played good. He played great. I mean, good, you know, serviceable, more than that. 287 and two touchdowns. Looks like Patrick Mahomes uh, didn't even play there at the end. So not really sure. Latavius Murray also for the Redwoods too. They had good stats. I don't really know why they why they lost i guess the short answer is the huskies have patrick mahomes and when you have patrick mahomes you just flat out win but that is how things shook up wild wild card week a wild wild card weekend here in the inaugural season of the sfl and remember if your team got eliminated we're running it back for another season too gonna just play it out really till madden 25 comes out but that is going to do it for me tonight guys as always i appreciate you stopping by I will catch you on the next one for the divisional round of the SFL playoffs. Until then, peace.